What's up, y'all? Bill Kamak, BillCQC.com. Today I'm mixing this loop I call In the Trenches using Logic 9. I wanted to show y'all the elements of the loop. First of all, you have the drum track, which says kick here, but it's actually giving you kick, snare, and hats. So if I click on any one of these, it stays on the green up here. This is the bass track right here. Bass track is over here. Lit up. Right here is the synth track. It's right here. These graphs up here show you the pattern from the equalizers on each channel. These are the inserts, the plugins I have on each track. This is the input output section where I'm using Ultra Beat, the drum machine. This is where you're going to see the volume of each track, and this is where you're going to see the overall output volume. This is our level meter up here. Basically, you do not want to pass zero. You want to stay a little bit short of zero. And it's set up for peak and RMS, which means you're going to see two different colors. One showing where the peaks are hitting, the other showing the average volume. Right here is my limiter, which sits on the output track and makes sure it doesn't go over zero. This is an equalizer, which is also sitting on the output channel, but I'm not using it for equalization. I'm using it for the analyzer. So you can see the graph of what's going on. This is bass over here going all the way to treble over here. So there's the low end and the high end. So I'm going to let the track loop a couple of times and then we'll look at what each individual channel is doing. So first we're going to look at our drums and specifically the kick track. So we're going to solo all of these and go again. There's our kick track over here. It's our snare track. Hi-hats. Bass. Alright, so on the kick track I got sub bass and I got channel EQ. If I open this up, this is the same pattern that you see here. And what's going on here is I'm boosting the high mid so I can get a better click sound from the kick. Sub bass adds sub bass. All right, on the snare track. Same first deal, I have a channel EQ. What this is doing is blocking the low frequencies, changing the sound of my snare. I like it better this way, it doesn't interfere with the kick so much and it has a different tone to it. 
I also needed to change the tone, so I pitch shifted the snare. Bypass and turn it off. Then I also wanted the snare out of the center. I had a lot of stuff going on in the center. So I got my direction mixer. And it spread instead of 1.0 to 1.7. I had same deal as the snare. Blocking a bunch of low end information that I don't need. And I don't need it and I don't want to hear it. Also, the reason this goes up this high, even though nothing else is on, is that I added to the gain here. So that brought this up. The reason I did that was so that I could have the fader at zero while I had the volume the way I wanted it for the hi-hats. And they're pretty much all set up that way so that I like for my mix volume to be what I consider correct while the faders are all at zero. This helps out when I'm mixing because anytime I feel like changing these values if I want to go back to what I had before I just blank it out at zero. It's not like I started at minus 3.6 or something and I have to remember that. Also these numbers are in the red which means I've gone over zero on these channels which doesn't make a difference because I'm not going over zero on my output channel. So it sounds fine. I can go over zero on these channels all I want. I don't want to go over zero on this one. Next up is bass. Same deal, channel EQ. pick sound and over here I'm taking out a little bit of the sub bass sub bass on here like I have on the kick so 
this is what it sounds like without the plugins. Same deal pretty much with the synth. I have a directional mixer, widening the signal out, the stereo delay, causing an echo basically, channel EQ. Since the gray area is under zero, that means I'm taking out sound instead of adding to sound like I was with the hi-hats. And again, I did that with the master gain and again I did that so that I could have my synth fader at zero you have a phaser giving some movement to the sound you'll hear the difference it makes when I play it got pedal board adding distortion with a guitar pedal another channel EQ before the guitar pedal flanger and compressor. So here's what it sounds like without the plugins. brings us to our output channel where's our limiter which is what I told you about we're just keeping it from going above zero we got our channel EQ which isn't doing anything but showing us the waveforms and we have our level meter showing us we're not going above zero and we have a healthy relationship between our peak and RMS values RMS is right up under your peak, your music's not going to be very dynamic and it's going to sound squashed. You pretty much want to have about 10 decibels difference between those. And that's pretty much it. Bill C, BillCQC.com. Catch me on Facebook. I'm doing what I do. I'm out. Peace.